Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Zenbook Enterprise. I mean, the Zenbook 14X OLED Space Edition. Okay, so a big thank you to ASUS for sending this over and also sponsoring this video because I'm actually the only one in the UK to get their grubby little paws on this. So kind of an exclusive, pretty cool. I'm just bashing my plan as I'm talking about the laptop. Well, ASUS have announced a ton of new laptops for 2022, including a fully refreshed ZenBook range, which sits just above the VivaBook series. So you've got your regular ZenBook 14 OLED, and then you've got this, which shares many of the same features, but it just takes it a step further, the 14X OLED Space Edition. And this isn't just some fancy limited edition version with a fresh coat of paint and some fancy packaging. This is actually a bit of a step up. Although the first thing you'll notice is the packaging and the design of this thing. Inside the fancy reflective box, we have a few little collector items, including some stickers, and the box itself actually doubles as a stand, which is handy. Now ASUS call this Zero G Titanium, which also has these very cool copper accents. And the design is actually partly inspired by Mir, where they actually had an ASUS laptop in the space station. Now, if you are a regular on the channel, and if not, why not? Then you'll know that I am a massive nerd. And the fact that we have this space edition ASUS laptop is pretty cool because right now I'm paying an unhealthy amount of attention to the James Webb telescope as it's painfully unfolding. We've all got our fingers crossed. So that's sort of going on. And also I'm a massive fan of Star Trek and Star Wars actually. Uh, so this is right up my street. But as well as all this and some contrasting tones on the keyboard, we actually get this guy. It's a three and a half inch feature vision screen. It's a monochrome OLED display, very much like what we got on the ROG phone, and it definitely makes it stand out. Being black and white and OLED, it drains very little battery, and you can customize it through the My Asus app. So a little bit like the anime matrix we see on some of the ROG laptops, you can actually use this for your fancy custom text, or you can just have some at a glance information like time and battery life. The thing is, even if you have no interest at all in buying this laptop, you've got to tip your hat to Asus for actually innovating and trying something different. It's not going to make a you know, fundamental difference to how you use your laptop, but I think it's pretty cool. So we've got this unique space inspired design and color scheme as well as this feature vision screen on the back. But as well as that, this space edition is actually more durable as well. It's been designed to work in a wider range of temperatures and even with extreme vibrations. So now you can comfortably use this on a vibrating bed in a motel in the Arctic, just like we've always dreamed. Now front and center, we have this 14 inch OLED screen and we get a 16 by 10 aspect, a 90 Hertz refresh rate. It covers 100% of the DCI P3 color gamut and it's Pantone validated. You can't really ask for much more on a laptop like this. And while the Space Edition is an all new model, this does actually share the same screen as the ZenBook 14 OLED. And new this year, we're getting that, as I say, taller 16 by 10 aspect which just makes all the difference, particularly on smaller screen laptops like this. So you, you have that little bit extra space at the top and bottom. And also the bump up to 90 Hertz from 60 just makes everything feel smoother. Now, of course, you guys know the benefits of an OLED screen. We're getting that sort of infinite contrast, super inky, rich blacks, vibrant, but also accurate colors. But of course, there is always that worry of image retention, aka burn-in. Now, I've never personally experienced it. It can happen if you abuse the screens, but actually in the MyAsus app, we have these pixel shift, pixel refresh options, automatically hide the uh, taskbar when you're not using it. So realistically, if you're sensible, you're never gonna have any problems with this. Okay, let's talk specs. And inside we get up to a 12th gen Intel i9 processor. That's the most powerful laptop 45 watt H series chips, by the way, none of that U or P series. And the full power of this kicks in when you go into performance mode. I guess my only criticism is that we are still limited to Intel's Iris Xe graphics. Uh, there's no dedicated RTX 3050 or Ti or anything like that. Intel Arc perhaps would have been nice to see. Uh, we got that on the new Acer Swift X16, which I uh, made a video on the other day. Again, we'll have to see how that actually performs. Although actually, since we do have Thunderbolt 4 ports with this, you could always hook up an eGPU if you wanted to for some proper graphical grunt. And actually it wouldn't be as throttled and restricted as a lot of thin lights because we do have that H45 watt series CPUs. Hmm. 
elsewhere. We get up to 32 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, a terabyte of PCI4 storage, as well as new ice cool technology, which as it says on the tin and together with the dual fans inside helps to keep everything nice and cool. Plus we get some nice extras like the latest Wi-Fi 6E, the speakers support Dolby Atmos, the power button doubles as a fingerprint reader, the touchpad doubles as a numpad, and they've also squeezed the webcam with an IR sensor for face unlocking in that top bezel. We do still get this very nifty hinge. I think it's the Ergo Lift or Ergo Sense, some marketing spiel, uh, which obviously helps improve the airflow to keep things nice and cool as well. And actually one area this also differs from the standard ZenBook 14 OLED is we get 92% screen to body ratio versus 90%. Not a big deal, but just slightly thinner bezels. And together with this really well-spaced comfy keyboard and nice big touchpad, there's really not much to criticize here. Now I would love to run some proper battery tests and performance benchmarks on this, but as I say, I'm not allowed to yet. But what I can tell you is the price and availability because the 14X OLED Space Edition will start from £1,599. So definitely on the premium side and also come out in April. And realistically that puts this up against the likes of the new Dell XPS 13 Plus. I think a comparison between the two is definitely worth doing, but there is just something a little bit different about this. And so far, I've only had this for a couple of days, I'm really enjoying using it, but make sure you have subscribed and stay tuned for my full review as well as tons more laptop videos and comparisons. And let me know what you think of this. Do you like the design? And also would you pay 1600 pounds for one? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.